If you haven't done so yet, make sure that you pause the video and try to answer the question first on your own before listening on. We begin with the equation for the resistivity of copper or of any other material that a wire is made from. We can see that the resistivity given by the Greek letter rho is equal to the magnitude of the electric field of the material divided by the current density magnitude of that material. Now what we're going to do is rearrange this equation and solve it for the current density. And so what we can do is multiply both sides of the equation by the current density so that it cancels out on the right hand side. And then we'll divide both sides of the equation by the resistivity value rho so that it cancels out on the left hand side. And then we can see that the current density is equal to the electric field divided by the resistivity. Now we're going to examine section two of this setup because we actually know the length of that section. And what we're going to do is come up with an expression for the electric field that is present in section two. Now we know that the electric field would equal the potential difference across that length of wire in section two divided by that length itself. So we're going to substitute this expression for electric field in for E. This is going to allow us now to calculate the current density that is present in section two. So we can go ahead and call this J sub two, which means that these would have to have subscripts of twos as well for the length of section two and then the potential difference in section two. The question gives us the potential difference in section two of the wire. They note that it is 10 microvolts. So what we'll do is come over here and do 10, and we need to convert it to the standard unit of volts. So we'll multiply that by 10 to the minus six. That gives the value in volts. And then we'll divide by the length of section two, which is stated to be two meters. And then we'll divide that quantity by the resistivity of copper. Now you'd have to go back into the chapter of the textbook and look up the resistivity of copper. And if you do that, you will find a value of 1.69 times 10 to the minus eighth ohm meters, so that's the value for copper. So we can plug this into our calculator and that's going to allow us to find the current density in section two of the wire. And doing so gives a value of roughly 296 and then the standard unit of current density would be the current per meter squared or amps per meter squared. We will next apply a principle of the conservation of current and what that means is this. If there is a certain amount of current that's flowing through section one of the wire, then that same amount of current must also be flowing through section two. Now we know that the amount of current that's flowing through a particular section of wire would be its current density multiplied by its cross-sectional area. And so what we can say is that the current flowing through section one must equal the current flowing through section two. And then we will substitute this expression for those currents into this conservation equation. So we'll come over here and do that. We'll write I1 equals I2. And then for I1, we're going to have its current density multiplied by its cross-sectional area. And then we'll set that equal to the current density of section two multiplied by its cross-sectional area. We'll solve this for the current density found in section one, J1. So we'll divide both sides of the equation by the area A1, canceling it on the left-hand side. Now for area two, we have circular wires. So what we would say for that cross-sectional area would be the area of a circle. That would be pi times the radius of section two squared. And then we'll divide that by a similar expression for the cross-sectional area of wire one. That would be pi times the radius one squared. Now, if we study this carefully, of course, the pi's will cancel out. Algebraically, we can rewrite the right-hand side as radius two over radius one, all of which would be squared. We know the current density in section two of the wire, that's 296 amps per meter squared. The radius of section two was stated indirectly. We have the diameters of section one and of section two. So if we come over here, we can convert those into radii. We could see that R1 would just be half of that diameter. So that would be 2.00 R. And then R2 would be half of its diameter. So that would be 1.00 R. So we'll plug in those values for R2 and R1. And don't forget to square it. We can see that those capital R's will cancel out. 
So we'll have 296 multiplied by 1 half squared. And this gives us a value for the current density found in wire 1 to be 74 amps per meter squared. So this is the value of J1. Finally, the drift speed of the conduction electrons in section 1, which we can call V sub D, is equal to its current density divided by the quantity N multiplied by E. Now, of course, we just figured out the current density. N represents the number of charge carriers per unit volume. Now, that was given to us in the question. And then E, of course, is the standard value of the unit charge. So that's going to be 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs. So we'll go ahead and plug in all the known values. And then when you process that calculation, you should get roughly 5.45 times 10 to the minus 9. And then since we calculated a velocity using all standard units, this should work out to meters per second. And so this would be the correct answer to the question. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, click that thumbs up icon and then also subscribe so you can stay tuned for similar videos. Remember that you can send in your own question to the email address displayed on the screen and I'll do my best to post the solution to it here on YouTube.